Hello everyone, thanks for coming tonight. Tonight we have Lee Chantel giving us a talk on consistency and commitment in business and beyond. So this is for the Vegan Business Network. Uh, we run two regular events per month. One which is an information night and another which is just a social gathering for people to get to know each other. So um, I'd like to introduce you to Lee Chantel. Thanks, Wade. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. Like Wade and Jasmine said, my name is Lee Chantel. Um, I've been vegan for almost 20 years in January, and I've run a online vegan community called VivaLaVegan.net for 10 years. Hope you all know of it. If you don't, why not? <laughs> and um, so in my 20 years of vegan, so many things have changed. So many things are different, some for good, some for bad. And um, a lot more people know about veganism, especially the plant-based aspects of it. And a lot of people are vegan or eat more of a plant-based diet. And there's a lot more vegan and vegan friendly businesses now. And this also means that there's a lot of companies making money from veganism. And these companies don't necessarily share the vegan ethics and they don't necessarily care about these ethics and other social justice issues. So people always ask my advice, how to become vegan, how to stay vegan, how to encourage other people to become vegan. And my biggest piece of advice that I can give to you and to anyone who asks me is to lead by example and be consistent. So um, I think that's, it's that simple and I think that's all that matters. So lead by example and be consistent. And tonight I'm going to talk about how to be consistent, how to be committed, and how to lead by example to be the best person and the best vegan that you can be. And um, this is whether or not you're in a business or just day-to-day -day life. And so Vegan Business Network put on this event tonight. So thanks Wade, thanks Jasmine for that. And they invited me to speak here. And they just gave me an open invitation to speak about whatever I like. So I hope you've liked this topic tonight. It's the first time I've um, given this talk. And um, they aim to include businesses and entrepreneurs to work together to understand what veganism is and how it can impact their business and the rest of the world. And I hope to see you at some of their other talks and their panels. And um, Billy Simmons, myself, and a couple of other people uh, will be part of a mock meat panel in a few weeks' time. Um, next month, I think. Next yeah. Month, yeah. And um, please have some great questions for me because I'm going to allow some time for Q&A &A at the end. So I really liked the interaction with people. Make sure you're listening to what I say for one and to make sure we've covered off other things um, if I haven't had enough time to do them in the speech. So first off, what is consistency? And a basic explanation of that is regularity, constancy, stability, and lack of change or deviation. And what is commitment? Commitment is something dedicated, promised, a pledge or a vow that someone undertakes. So we're gonna keep these, these things in mind tonight. And people want to look consistent with their words, with their beliefs, with their attitudes and their deeds. And most people tend to behave consistently with choices that they've already made. Once committed to an action or a stance, or even a football team, this becomes part of your identity. You will tend to act in a way that reinforces this choice at pretty much all times. And once we see something as part of our personality, for example, support the Gold Coast Suns, Brisbane Lions, you're a vegan, you um, are an activist, you're someone who donates your time or donates money to local sanctuaries or um, not-for-profits. 
And these are things you're willing to commit to more and more to become this person and to have this personality and to act consistently with that aspect of your personality. Um, there's a great writer and his name is Robert Saldini and he speaks about um, putting his scientific research on the field of influence into practical business applications. And I strongly suggest that you check out his website, which is influenceatwork.com, or read his books. And he has um, a six or step um, principles um, that he identifies to influence people. And one of them is commitment and consistency. So his description of the principle of commitment and consistency is that we feel we must always align our outer actions and promises with our inner choices and systems. For example, our beliefs and our values. And when we make a promise, we feel obliged to fulfill that promise. When we make a decision, we like to feel as though it's the right decision for us. And when we do something out of alignment with our beliefs, values, etc., we may change these inner aspects in order to restore this alignment. When we have committed to something, we tend to justify this commitment by inventing new rationale and seeking confirmation that we have made the right choice. Now, most people don't go straight into a big commitment overnight. They would have smaller commitments that they commit to along the way. And these all add up to hopefully the same outcome. So, for example, um, you're not going to just go, hey, I'm going to quit my job and start a new business overnight. There'd be sort of processes along the way that would add up to that. For example, you'd be doing something you enjoy on the weekend, start to make some money from it, start enjoying it, starting putting more time and energy into that, and then deciding, hey, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to focus on the business full time. And the more that you commit to something with either time, money, effort, or your identity, this becomes harder and harder to keep from a further commitment. This can be both a good and a bad thing. Marketers and social engineers, they use this and they use these bad aspects to get us to do what they want. So how can we commit to an outcome and not end up in over our heads? How can our commitments not lead to stubbornness or actions or go against what we stand for, even if, it's, um, if it needs to change over time? And I think from this that we need to start at the word ethics and what that means. So um, ethics will be like moral principles that affect how people make decisions and live their lives and what we deem as right or wrong. So for example, myself as a vegan, I am committed to not using, abusing, harming, or killing any animals for my own use. And this includes not consuming any animal flesh, animal secretions, animal products, animal byproducts. But veganism is not just a diet. It also includes choices that you make in regards to non-dietary aspects. And these things include clothing, cosmetics, household goods, and it also includes choices that you make in regards to, say, companies or places or events that do or do not exploit animals. So if you think about this and you think about knowing this and being committed to a vegan lifestyle, these ethics and my ethics, they help me to work out what foods, what clothing, what cosmetics, and what businesses I choose to support or choose not to support because of my commitment to being vegan. And it makes it easy, if you will, to live in line with my ethics and let my decisions reflect this. 
and we're given so many choices and decisions that we make daily. Commitment and consistency make things easier by reducing the amount of things that we need to think about. Make one decision and use this as a reference for your subsequent related choices. We always judge people by their actions and um, we all know what it feels like to be let down and frustrated when someone says they'll do something or be somewhere and they, their commitment isn't kept. We don't trust these people in the long run with their word and they will be consistent in their actions of course but it might not be in a positive way. And private commitments are really easy to break, especially with our online um, interaction that we have nowadays. I'm sure lots of people know people have been broken up with over text. So much easier to do than do it one in one. And um, it, and what about a thought to think about is if it takes a great deal of trouble, pain and effort to attain something, is this valued more highly than something that takes only a minimum of effort? So I'd like you to think about that tonight. And I just want to share a few things that I've heard over the years of being vegan, that I've heard other vegans complain about, that I've even experienced myself. There's a few things that you might not agree with that people do, that you've seen in practice. And I just wanted to list a few of them and just have a think about how you feel that that sits in line with what you believe or what you think that they believe in. So some examples would be, what would you think of a vegan business that sells cow's milk? What would you think of vegan friendly companies or plant-based companies that aren't vegan, that people aren't vegan themselves? What would you think about companies who source ethical products but maybe they're not exactly ethical in the way they deal with their staff or their customers. What about um, some other issues, like social justice issues, from environmental issues, feminine, feminist issues, and many other issues as well? Um, how people treat their staff is a really good way to, to gauge how their business is doing and how a business will be successful or not. How people act online, what are they sharing online, what's the tone they're using online, these sort of things. And also I've heard a lot of people don't seem to pay other vegan businesses when they owe them money. I think that's horrible. So these sort of things, for me, they make me wonder if I want to actually support these businesses with my money. And um, it's up to you whether or not you agree with these things. And I think these issues are examples of things that are upsetting to others because we don't agree with their interpretation of their own ethics. And so in business, the difference between a good and a great brand is consistency. From your logo to the colours you use in your marketing and your branding to the message that you share to promote your brand. All good things are built over time, they require thought, they require strategy and consistent implementation of these things. You need to focus on what you want to achieve and commit to the things you need to make them happen. Some examples would be, um, if you want to write a book or you want to write some blogs or you'd like to write an e-book, maybe focus on writing 500 words a day. That's your focus. Every day I'm going to write 500 words. I saw a bit of a laugh in the audience there, maybe 500 a week, is that better? <laughs> and. Um, if, you, if you're focusing on a blog or you're focusing on podcasts, interview someone else a week, at least one person a week, at least write one blog a week. And you need to commit to this and be consistent in that. Also, it's really important to work out who and what you want your company to be associated with. Think about these points in regards to your business. And consistency helps manage perceptions and it implies professionalism, purpose, stability, and instills confidence. 
Consistency shows your outlook and your attitude to deliver specific outcomes. For example, are you knowledgeable? Are you focused? Are you driven? Do you follow through on the things you say you will? Are you an expert in your field? All these things you can deliver through being consistent. Consistency protects your investment in your business by building a focused message and it builds upon its past successes. And also, you need to communicate to your team or the people around you the um, importance of your brand and your message and your strategies. A friend of mine, Katrina Fox, you might have heard of her, she has a website called Vegan Business Media and she's written an amazing book called Vegan Ventures and she has um, interviewed, I think it was over 60 different people who own either vegan businesses or are vegan entrepreneurs and they all share their experiences in their business and lots of lots and lots of different things actually like one of the things would you use the term vegan or plant-based in your business um, I'm also in there because I answer um, quite a few questions on social media and marketing online now I'd like us all to take some time out to work out where our ethics lie where is your line that you don't cross I gave a um, talk, I was part of a panel um, in Portland, Oregon in the States a few years ago and it was a vegan fashion panel and it was really interesting because there was three of us girls on the panel and um, for me, being a vegan, I don't buy anything that comes from an animal whether that's new or second hand but some of the other girls on the panel, they thought it was quite okay to buy second hand things so I found that really interesting and we actually opened up this really great discussion with people in the audience too. And there's so many different lines that people have and lines that people will cross or won't cross. And it's really interesting to find your own. So, and you have to think about, does your own line in the sand match up with others? And I'd like to give a good example because it's a bit of a contentious issue within the vegan community um, whether or not vegans should consume honey. Now if you bring it back to the original idea of what a vegan is, is not consuming, hurting, abusing or killing any animals including insects, then honey is not vegan. So if you're calling yourself a vegan but you still eat honey, what are, what are the things that you could do from here? So there's two options. You could maybe stop calling yourself vegan because you're eating honey and that's from bees and vegans don't eat anything from bees. Or you could choose to call yourself plant-based maybe instead. Or you could um, work out something else that works for you. And this sort of... I'd like to focus on maybe like the difference between going back on your words and actually changing and evolving because they're quite different things. And I'm reading this great book at the moment. It's called Reclaiming Conversation by Sherry Turkle. And um, it's all about us being connected but not actually conversing anymore. And um, she makes this really good point in regards to where we are versus where we want to be. And she says that we shouldn't conf confuse the difficult with the impossible, as everything good requires work. And if we ourselves commit to the work, then it's work that we know how to do. So look to other great leaders in your field for inspiration See how they live their lives and model yourself on those who you admire. Now, consistent people are seen as rational, trustworthy, stable and decisive. There will always be pressure, good or bad, to make decisions based on your past actions. Have a look at the pressure, for example, we face or we put on politicians who change their policies. Um, have a look at pressure we put on vegan places that are no longer vegan or even on the other side of the coin I know um, non-veg places who've just become vegan and the pressure that they are getting from their non-veg um, customer base. Each decision and step you take 
no matter how small, is your own commitment to being consistent with your own beliefs and your own ethics. Know how to say yes and know what's important to you. Who you hire, what ingredients you choose, which businesses you deal with, which friends you make time for. But also know how to say no and what no longer works for you. What no longer brings you joy and what is no longer on the same path for your own conscious evolution to being the best person you can be and the best vegan you can be. So um, I'd like, if you need any more information, come to, I'll put, I'm going to put this video up online on my vivalavegan.net YouTube channel. So I'll put the links to some of those books and websites I mentioned on there. And um, have a look at vivalavegan.net for more information and across all social media channels. And I hope you've got good questions because I'd like to hear them. Thank you. Questions, please. Billy. Was this talk inspired by a book? Inspired by a book? No. Or? No, not really. But um, I'm inspired lately this this week or over the weekend from the book I'm reading about communication. What was the name of it? Um, it's Sherry Turkle, um, Reclaiming Conversations by Sherry Turkle. So the whole idea of the book. I can carry on about online stuff for a while, so stop me if you get bored, but um, she was, she's explaining how we're all um, interacting with people online all the time, but it's at, actually to the detriment of one-on-one -on -one conversation, an actual conversation, and in particular with children, we're showing, we're seeing that kids nowadays are not showing empathy, and that's because they're not interacting with people online. It's sort of like I was saying before about the, you know, breaking up with people via text. Like if, you, if you're sitting down one-on-one -on -one to someone and you go, hey, don't want to see you anymore, you can maybe see their interaction, you can empathise and feel how they're feeling, you maybe might reconsider. But if you're doing it via text, you're not seeing how they're reacting, which therefore means you can't empathise with how they're feeling. So anyway, it's a really good book. So the question was about how to um, promote how people are, how people are um, using and abusing animals in the most effective way of talking about that, of creating the awareness for animals getting used and abused. And I would think from a marketing perspective, um, anything positive is going to be shared more than anything negative. So we have to look online, just look at what gets shared the most. Selfies, pictures of food, happy sort of fun things where people don't necessarily have to think too much about them. So that's why a lot of people share that sort of stuff because they're going to get likes and everyone wants that sort of stuff. But you can mix those sort of things up with, with letting people be aware about these sort of things. So an example that I like to give a lot of people is um, sharing a photo of, say, a pig that's been rescued from... We've got an um, animal sanctuary called Farm Animal Rescue in Brisbane and um, you could share a photo or you could share a story of a pig that's been rescued. You could say this is the life the pig used to lead and now because of animal sanctuaries and because of people being vegan like myself, we've been able to save these animals from this sort of life. And a nice photo, cute photo, cute video, that will go over much better with a lot of people than going, oh my god, blood and guts and a pig upside down. So, you know, you just have to think about those sort of things and try and learn from other ways people market things. But then, you know, there's this saying that I really like and it um, says there's three types of people. There's um, one type of person will get things, one, the other type will get things when they're shown and the other will never get it. So, for me, um, I try and focus on those people that get it and that will get it when they're shown because you're never going to be able to get everyone. No, not many people will care about some of the things that you care about. It's just the way of the world. So I try and focus on those first two people and try and forget the other people. That sometimes helps. <laughs> Wait.
Alrighty, so there's a number of vegan businesses that some people will become aware of the employees being treated poorly. What do you think that the vegans have become aware of that should do? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and so I've heard there's a lot of companies like that at the moment. Um, I think one thing, whenever you hear any sort of injustices or anything you don't agree with, the first thing to do is just listen to people. That's, you know, that's a really important thing to be able to be there for someone when they're sharing how they feel or sharing an experience. I think that's really, really important. Um, and I think you have to maybe focus on that aspect rather than trying to change something for someone and fix something for someone because you might not be able to change that for someone. It might not even be what they want you to do. Um, and I think it would be good to find out what they want to happen from the situation. And if maybe if you could get a few other people to get to, I don't want to give like specifics, I think I know what you're talking about because I've heard about it from other people. But um, if it's something illegal, then you need to talk to the proper people who will sort that out. Um, and you should be encouraging them to do that as well because if they're working in that business and they report it, that's going to have more sway than, oh, so-and-so told me that so-and-so happened at so-and-so. So that would be something that I would do. But then you've also got to think about that might be the only job that they can get or the only job that they that works with their lifestyle. So you don't want to be getting in the way of someone losing a job or... You know, so you really sort of have to think about all these things because I honestly think everything's not black and white as much as we want to think it is, especially being vegan, it's really not. And you have to think about all these other aspects too. So, and then maybe, um, I, I know some, I, I read something just recently about um, like your ethics and your business's ethics. And if you start off employing people that are maybe on the same wavelength as you, maybe just focused on making money, not really caring about the environment, people, planet sort of stuff. And then there's people that are coming into your business and coming to join your staff that are saying, oh, hey, I don't really agree with that. But then because everyone else is on the page that you are, you're getting rid of all those other people that are calling you out maybe on some things. And this person was saying sooner or later, your business is going to shoot itself in the foot. If you're, if you're creating a business that's a negative business or that's employing negative tactics to make money or go further in your business, sooner or later that business is going to suffer. So I think that happens in time. Hope that answers that question. <laughs> The question is about vegans who are running non-vegan businesses. In regards to they work there or they've created their own? They've created their own. Okay, so, hmm, um, I try not to be judgmental, but sometimes these things make you judgmental, don't they? So, I guess, um, you, you, have to, you have to work it out from a marketing perspective, you have to work it out from a sustainable market or a sustainable business perspective. Why, why are they doing it? Is it because, um, you know, I, I do know a few places interstate that are vegan but they have dairy milk, cow's milk that they serve and their reason for that is before they were serving the cow's milk, people would come in and realise they don't have cow's milk for the for their coffee and go next door. So they would say, look, you know, we want people to come and sit down in our store, have all the vegan goodies we've got here, and if that's what we have to do, get people to stay in our store, that's what we do. But then you've also got to think about, um, could they not get funding if it was a vegan place? Like, were their parents giving them money and they wouldn't fund something that was vegan? Is their partner, is their husband, is their wife, are they vegan or not? Because 
as much as we like to think we're going to have a vegan business, I'm going to open a vegan business, it's going to be great, it's probably not going to be that easy. And if your biggest support is your partner or your parents or someone that doesn't necessarily agree with your ethics, that might be something. If I, I guess if they're okay and they're not vegan and they have a non-vegan place, then maybe we should try and be okay with that. I don't know. <laughs> it's the best I got with that one. <laughs> um, the question is about whether fast food places that are bringing out vegan things is a good thing. Well, there's two takes on that. Um, personally, I would never buy anything from those places because it goes against everything I stand for. From um, you know, ruining the environment, not proper wages, um, just completely um, marketing ki marketing to kids and getting kids addicted to stuff from a young age, and um, just not being ethical in a lot of ways. But then, it's good for people who like those sort of places, who enjoy going to those sort of places who aren't vegan, to be able to buy something that is vegan. So it, from a marketing perspective, you're covering a lot of bases by doing that. And for the, not everyone's gonna be vegan. Like at best, we're one to two percent, you know? And there's a lot of people, and the majority of people nowadays who are consuming vegan products are not vegan. So that's really important. And I think like there's, there's two places in particular in Sydney who were non-veg and they've just gone vegan just recently, just last year. And um, it freaked out most of their customers, like absolutely freaked them out. But they've, they've been most of, not most of them, but a large majority of their customer base have seen that it's good quality food and they've gone back and they've supported it. But um, it has to be good quality for one. And I like I know some of my friends, there's a certain ice cream brand that everyone's getting excited about at the moment that has vegan options. And that doesn't really excite me because they're making their money through the dairy, from the dairy industry, which is horrible. And I don't want any more money to go to them. Yes, maybe if they see that there's a lot of money going to these vegan things, then they could create the whole range to be vegan. Maybe. Um, that, that's a good aim, I guess. But will it happen? Not sure. Okay, well, I might wrap it up then, everyone. Um, come and ask me a question if you were a bit shy to ask me in front of everyone. And um, thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Wade and Jasmine, for putting it on. And thanks, Mandela, for having us.